Something terrifying is happening right now. Only the Bible can explain. The world is disintegrating, and the end times are drawing near. Scary things happening all throughout the world indicate the apocalypse is closer than we realize. Will you be one of those saved, or will you be abandoned to the coming apocalypse? You have the decision to make, but the moment to make it and act is now. In what ways, if at all, are Christians being threatened? In this video, we're going to tell you about the terrifying incidents happening in the world that only the Bible can explain. Stay tuned. The moral decline of society and the number of those who reject God are both on the rise. Recent events prove that we are living in the end times and that the rapture is imminent. Wars, natural disasters, and other catastrophes are only some of the calamities that the Bible predicts will occur in the end times when a powerful and malevolent figure known as the Antichrist will rise to power. How can Christians best prepare themselves for the future? Even if you've never believed in the rapture before, there is clear evidence that the end times are near and that Christians should get ready. Eventually, Jesus Christ will come back to earth and it will happen sooner than we think. And when he does arrive, he will take his followers to heaven and leave those who haven't accepted him as their savior to face the fury of the Antichrist. What is the rapture? All true believers will be taken up, or raptured, to meet the Lord in the air upon Christ's return, according to the doctrine of the rapture. All Christians, whether living or dead, will share in the glory that comes with the resurrection of the dead. 1 Thessalonians 4, 15-17 teaches this directly, but 1 Corinthians 15, 51-55, and John 14, 2 hint at it. Other verses are also up for discussion, including Matthew 24, 31, and 2 Thessalonians 1, 10, and Revelation 14, 14-16. 14 Christians believe that God's redemptive mission involves restoring what was lost in Adam, namely the correct functioning of his rule in creation through the vice regency of humanity living in proper relation to him. Paul explains in Romans 8, 18 through 23, that the resurrection of the dead, including Christians, is a component of that restoration. Therefore, the rapture contributes to this renewal insofar as it is linked to the resurrection. The Bible, however, also teaches that before Christ's return and the foundation of the Messianic kingdom, God will unleash his vengeance upon the world. The rapture is the mechanism by which the church will be saved from this judgment. Timing of the rapture The rapture might be thought of as happening either before or after the tribulation period, or even before the wrath of God. According to some who hold the pre-tribulation perspective, the church will be raptured by God before the end of the age, often called the 70th week of Daniel from Daniel 9.27 or the tribulation, a perspective that holds that the entire era was marked by God's wrath. Part of the answer lies in differentiating between Christ's return to earth to reign and the rapture of the church. According to the doctrine of post-tribulationism, the church will be raptured by the end of the age, just before the millennial reign of Christ. The church will be raptured to heaven to meet the Lord, and then they will return to earth with him at once. According to the pre-wrath view, the final three and a half years before the end of the era would see the Antichrist begin his final persecution of God's people. Like pre-tribulationism, this view holds that the church will be raptured before the outpouring of God's wrath on the earth. However, unlike pre-tribulationism, this view also holds that the church will endure the final suffering at the hands of the Antichrist. How much focus should be given to the rapture? How one presents this emphasis to the world reflects their basic beliefs and understanding of Christian theology. Focusing too much on the rapture can lead to dogmatism and division among Christians if it becomes the primary focus of one's Christian life and one hides away until the return of Christ or merely and gleefully preaches destruction to unbelievers. It can also lead to a lack of attention to the larger issues that make for Christian unity and virtue, things much more clearly taught and prescribed in Scripture. Paul warned the Thessalonians in his letters about the first issue, while Jesus warned about the second issue in the Gospel of John. 
While it's essential to have a firm grasp of the scriptures, doing so to the point where one becomes haughty and unloving, both toward fellow believers and non-believers, is not a fruit of the Spirit. Signs of the End Times But understand this, in the last days men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers without self-control, brutal despisers of good traitors, impulsive, haughty lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, people who have a form of godlessness but deny its power. As stated in 2 Timothy 3.13, the evil and impostors of the last days will become much worse at fooling and being fooled. People care more about themselves and their own interests than they do about the welfare of others. Thus, they reject God's teachings and the Ten Commandments found in the Bible. Even though many people would see signs, they would still reject the truth as prophesied in the Bible. What should Christians do? But the Spirit clearly indicates that in the latter times, some will slip away from the faith, giving attention to deceiving spirits and the doctrines of devils through the hypocrisy of liars burned into their own consciences like a branding iron. 1 Timothy 4, 1-2 All Christians must be on guard against being persuaded by these wicked powers and resist the temptation to abandon their religion. Christians should be diligent in obeying God's word and in showing love and compassion to others as Christ commanded. Plague, Earthquakes, and Incurable Diseases Signs of Rapture all Christians today also need to be on the lookout for the horrific indicators of destruction. As described in Matthew 24-7 of the Bible, the world is currently experiencing a plethora of problems, including starvation, disease, and earthquakes. Despite God's bountiful blessing of the earth, many people nevertheless struggle with hunger every day. This year's COVID-19 has heightened worldwide consciousness of man's susceptibility to new diseases. According to the World Health Organization, this isn't the only current pandemic. The recent outbreaks of yellow fever, the plague, the Nipah virus, meningitis, and many more have only made things worse. The frequency and intensity of earthquakes are on the rise around the world, while superbugs are becoming resistant to medications. Between 1900 and 1969, there were roughly six major earthquakes every decade. Recent studies have shown that the frequency of major earthquakes has increased to more than once per month and that massive earthquakes now shock the planet once every year. All these horrible events are portents of the second coming of Jesus Christ. False Preachers There are indicators of dishonesty in the church that cannot be ignored. As the end of the world draws near, there is a greater opportunity for false instructors to mislead the populace. Matthew 4 4 through 5 in the New Testament warns us, Take heed that no one deceives you, because many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and they will mislead many. There will be a rise in the popularity of religious leaders, such as mystics and other leaders who profess a higher level of understanding as a result. The issue here is that they need to investigate further to learn the truth. Some people, rather than looking for the truth, try to find someone who will tell them what they want to hear. Since before the reforms of Josiah, king of ancient Israel, the church has had to contend with the dangers of deception. Instead of rejecting God, the people considered him just another deity in their pantheon, and this was encouraged by the priests who were supposed to represent God to the people. The ethos of tolerance that permeates modern society condones all manner of unethical behavior while simultaneously denying absolute truth, making syncretism like this all the more widespread. We have also seen a departure from the true doctrine on the part of some churches and pastors who have helped spread lies across our country. To win over the faithful, modern religious leaders promote lifestyles that go against the Creator's instructions. There's a spirit of deception at work here. This is not merely the latest trend, having taken control of the church in light of the current events. This ends the video for today. Do you now understand why terrifying incidents occur all over the world? Let us know in the comment section. Also, let us know what topics we should cover in our next video. Like and share this video. Do subscribe to our YouTube channel. 
We'll see you in the next video.